Southern California. So that's exciting. The drive-in was a blast. It's like eight lanes wide. And Would you agree with blast? This is the worst state on planet Earth. Like I'd rather be in Okay. Yeah. Very aggressive drivers. That's coming from people that drive aggressively. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got passed by 30 Toyota Corollas going double my speed. I took note, they were all Corollas. That's it. Except that big Bronco. Yeah. That Tahoe. Or we Tahoe, saw a truck yeah. on fire. So that was exciting for us, not so exciting for the person that owns the truck that's on fire. Yeah. We're heading to uh, the, the end goal of our trip today, which is the Toretto house from the first Fast and Furious, and also Bob's Market, where Brian orders tuna no crust, which is right down the street from that house. So that's exciting. Then we're getting the heck out of here. Off to Phoenix and then Texas. Boost, it's just stuttering, as if like the clutch is slipping on a normal car. It feels like that, but it's not that. It just like, it's just like whoa, 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 whoa. It took me probably 20 or 30 seconds to get from 70 miles an hour to 80 miles an hour. Consider it cold started. Blame everything on Marshall. We made it stuff. eight in the morning and we just visited Bob's Market and Dom Toretto's house from the first Fast and Furious. We're extremely excited because we are obsessed with the Fast and Furious movies. I know that's what got me into the car culture. I know that's what got Marshall into cars as well. So very exciting for us. Marshall's pumped. So pretty cool. We didn't get to order tuna no crust because Bob's Market was closed. What is happening? Seven. It's high speed chase, it's gotta be. Six. <laughs> hey, thank. Oh, what the? Oh, it's a thing. You chew it? Yep. Hey, thanks. said he could he could smell oil oh yeah she is hot hot that is new oil right there so what you got to do is start it again and see if it shoots up anywhere i hope you like to smell oil tyler eye on it because a, a one drip of oil makes it a lot a large This has to be a uh, smooth cross country road trip car, though, right? We just had a conversation about it. I said, I don't know that, I literally don't know that you could beat this thing, like, overall. Yeah. Because it's fast, it's super comfortable, it's got every freaking option you could imagine, yep. and it's a blast. And it's big. It's, yeah, you know. it's, yeah, you're cozy. Like, you yeah. sit in it, you have all the room you need. Yep. You bomb across the country, especially out west, where the roads are like. Yeah. Utah was freaking awesome. Yes. 
Just go. Yeah. We hit 180. Yeah. We were cruising really? at 150. Oh yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. We have a couple guys with us, but we were we were just doing like 120 the whole way over that mountain from Cal California, so we Yeah, like down through the valley, yeah. Yeah, we were way past them. Are, are we timing it? Oh, oh John. Oh yeah, here's the I got these things I yeah, this man. is gold. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Oh, I never, want orange I never had one. Yeah, that, yes. I have a 944 like I had in high school. Yeah, I really wanted to bring the NA, and like to those cars, that car was fine. There was nothing wrong with it at all. But yeah. I'm like, if I'm gonna take it across the country, I need to do belts and a couple other like timing belt and balance belt because I never did on those. Yeah, and they're interference motors, so you have to. But and I, I never did it ever since I bought it. I didn't even know when they were last done, which was a chance to begin with. So I went to do that, and while you're there, it's like you might as well replace the front engine seals. I had, it came apart perfect. Yeah, it's a good story. It came apart perfect. Going back together, I had every freaking problem you could possibly have. I tore it down and redid it three times. Yeah. I worked till one in the morning every single day for almost two weeks trying to get that thing done. Could not finish it. The, the last time I got it together, everything was fine. It ran for 20 minutes. I was bleeding the cooling system and a big puddle of oil appeared underneath one of the seals for the second time that I just put in is messed up and I don't know how. And this is my... Wife's brother Tom. How you doing? How's it going? She's a little hot. Hi. Hi. What's a little hot? She's a little uh I was about 220 the whole Ooh, time. Oh, it's nice and cool in here then. Yeah. I gotta let her cool down a little bit before I shut her off. Having a snack? Stuff's good. Pizza <laughs> Holly using hands too. He's the guy, I know I've told you this story, John. And for those of you that haven't heard it, it's fantastic. <laughs> Black Friday to yeah. get into Best Buy. Oh yeah. There, you know how there's a line out the door for Best Buy? <laughs> he made like a fake VIP Best Buy pass and then they put this on the morning news at, at Lake Trobe. They wanted to see if they could get in Best Buy with a fake pass and they did. Yeah, we cut 600 people in line. Yeah. <laughs> and just security, I showed the security I guard. remember. And the people in line were like, how'd you get that? I was like, I spent a thousand dollars Black Friday last year. <laughs> <laughs> we wrote like one of 50 on it. Are you serious? Yes. Like, yeah, yeah, security guard's like, here, right? Okay. Oh my God. And I didn't so buy funny. anything because I didn't want to like take, you know, if someone was going to buy a computer, I didn't want to take that from yeah. it. I just yeah. did it for the video. Yeah. But oh my God. Last night, we were at a parking garage and we were like, we were on the top floor. We were just taking pictures. And this cop comes up and he's kicking everyone out. And I was like, eh, I'm going to go talk to him. I'm like, officer, do you mind if we just take a couple more pictures? He's like, do you have a pass? And I was like, no, I don't have a pass, but I was like, that? oh, I gotta make a pass. <laughs> Welcome to drive the M2 if you want. If you want to take it real quick. I don't know if you guys have much it. time. You like how I film? <laughs> ben said he's had, uh, he's had a Hellcat around a track before, so he's relatively familiar with that. I don't know what police drive in this state, so. I'm happy you guys can stop. Well, Thank you awesome. very much. Yeah, good nice you. to see you. Yeah. Jeeves, subscribe to his channel. Please. Check him out. Thank you. So I can quit my job. <laughs> it is so hot. I took video of my GoPro. I'm trying to keep up with Josh. We're trying to make good time to Phoenix to meet up with his buddy. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but my cooling temp is 216 degrees. We're oh, 017 now. Air intake temp is 109. As I'm going, I uh, redacted 120 miles an hour down the road. The air intake temp was still 120. In Mexico. Huh? Somewhere in Mexico. Yeah, this is it all filmed in Mexico. That's where we are right now. Yeah, in Mexico. Disregard yeah, look at the roofs with the shingles. Yeah. Those are Mexican this is shingles. Espanol. It's an American part of Mexico, though. That's why everything's in English. It's like Tex-Mex, but backwards. It's mex tech My intake air temp is 125, and my intercooler coolant temp, which I didn't even know the intercooler had coolant, um, is 111. My car also tells me what, how much horsepower I'm using at, at any given moment. I, how, what are the guesses? How much horsepower am I using to get up this hill at 81 miles an hour? How much horsepower are you using to go right now? Yes. Probably 180. 37. You probably try using 180 then. I have no 
idea what we're doing or if we're allowed to be here, but this is pretty cool. Nobody said we can't be here, so legally we're allowed. Everybody's storing their, this is just a normal airport, I think, but everybody's storing their planes here right now because of all this crap. Is that a 747? Looks like it. Yeah, that's a 747. Look at the pilots holding the wings up. I just want to climb through one of those abandoned ones. You and me both. Go play around in some fuselages. heading to Tombstone, Arizona, which is an old west town that they like kind of kept the same and I'm very excited to see it. Something I've wanted to see for a long time. So we're about 10 minutes away from that right now. This is going to be cool. <laughs> Guys, this is going to be cool. White was walking up and Ringo was walking down. Ringo said, I want your blood. Why well, I said, I'm not going to fight you, Ringo. There's no money in it. At that moment, Doc walked out of the birdcage. And remember, they played poker in the birdcage for seven years, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. None stopped. As somebody got up, somebody sat down. And Doc walked out and said to Ringo, but I'm your ha hackle bearer. Hackle bearer. Hackles are the handles on a coffin. I'll carry your coffin. I'll bury you. That next corner is fourth, is fifth. That's where the walk down started. But it didn't start with four of them. It started with two, Wyatt and Virgil. You'll see on the left is Big Nose Kate. That was the Grand Hotel. Barbara came out and said, don't go down there, there's trouble. They carried on to fourth, where they met up with Virgil and Doc. Doc said, where are you going? He said, the OK Corral. I said, I'll come with you. He said, not your fight. He said, that's a fine thing to say to me. They deputized him and they turned right. He said, if you want to follow the walk, you go down to Fourth, turn right. Then you turn left onto Fremont. You come past City Hall. Behan came out of City Hall and said, don't go down there. I've disarmed them. And what you don't hear about is a Virgil hit him with the stick that he'd got from Doc and gave Doc a double barrel shotgun. And he doubled up, and Wyatt went through on his own. He was two steps ahead of the other three. Now, there's a, a wired up law in Tombstone. You can carry a gun between the birdcage and the, uh, and the OK Corral, but you cannot load it till either you're in the birdcage or the OK Corral. They were loaded, they were ready to go. Wyatt walked, turned in, and said, you son of a bitch has been looking for a fight. No, you couldn't have it. And they went for their guns. That moment, Virgil turned the corner and said, this is not what I want. Now, if you look across the street, you see the wall, the two walls here? That was the distance of the gunfight. Clans and McClowers were lined up against that wall. Wyatt turned in, as I said, said, you son of a bitch has been looking for a fight. And then Virgil said, this is not what I want. And you heard, click, click on the double barrel shotgun of Doc. 22 seconds and 35 bullets, it was all over. Now the only reason that Morgan got it in the shoulder and Virgil got it in the leg, because Wyatt shot Billy Clanton here in his right wrist. Billy took his gun and changed it over to his left and it went off and got Morgan in the shoulder. He was leaning up against the wall, he wasn't flat. Mm -hmm. And then the next bullet went into Virgil's leg. Oh, so it would never have happened. That's the story of the gunfight at the OK Corral. That's so cool. Now you know it. We're on our way to San Antonio. 93! We got 93! They got 93! This is the first time we've seen 93 Octane since, I think, Kansas. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? I blew a brake line. How? 